Welcome back to Words of Paradise, I'm your host, Leon Idol, and you know, the MCU nowadays is kind of like the war on terrorism. Not technically over, but does anyone really care about it anymore? And if the reviews for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania are anything to go off of, no one really cares about the MCU anymore. But that begs the question, why? Well, this article thinks it has the answer. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania proves the MCU has lost touch with the real world. I mean, I think they lost touch with the real world when they unleashed upon us that domestic act of terrorism that was known as She-Hulk. Maybe even earlier than that, but let's go on. Alright, it says it right here. This post contains spoilers for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. For all three of you watching this that actually care, you know, you might want to stop here. The rest of you, feel free to continue to be spoiled if you're even going to see this movie anyway. Once one of the central appeals of 1960s Marvel comics was that they took place in, more or less, the real world. Unlike DC Superman, for instance, who lived in an abstract urban amalgam called Metropolis, Marvel's Spider-Man lived in New York City using Manhattan skyscrapers as a means of swinging around town. The character was clearly designed by people who lived in New York and could easily imagine themselves swinging above the frustrating traffic on the ground. Spider-Man dealt with fantastical supervillains, yes, and might occasionally be whisked off to other planets, but also had to worry about making money, holding down a job, keeping his wife happy, and making sure his costume was clean. I mean, I absolutely have to worry about making money, holding down a job, keeping, you know, people happy, and my, my, my costume being clean? <laughs> I don't know, it looks fine to me. The point is, yeah, Marvel heroes were relatable. That's the one thing they were doing that DC wasn't. And, I've got a pretty uncommon opinion, Ant-Man, the first Ant-Man, is actually my favorite solo MCU movie tied with the first Thor movie. And, yeah, it did a great job. I thought Ant-Man was arguably the most relatable, at least, you know, for me as, as a person, uh, character the MCU had brought in up to that point. I think the first Ant-Man is an incredibly underrated MCU film. I haven't watched it in a couple years, so I don't know if it really holds up, but then again, most of the MCU doesn't hold up nowadays, so I could be wrong. When the Marvel Cinematic Universe began all those years ago, it took place in the real world. Tony Stark became concerned that weapons manufactured by his company were falling into the hands of criminals and sought to undo the damage by becoming Iron Man. Captain America saw his origins in the very real battlefields of World War II. Thor was the outlier in that he came from a fantasy universe, although his debut film was largely set in a small American town here on Earth. That film would have been stronger had Asgard never been seen. I don't know about that, but we're not here to critique the movie. We're here to critique, you know, the MCU as a whole. After 15 years, 31 films, and arguably 20 different TV shows, the real world has been left far, far behind. Yeah, that's, that's incredibly fair. Even the stuff that does take place in the real world, like, you know, WandaVision, or, which even that's not really the real world, but even things like Falcon and Winter Soldier that do take place in the real world, it doesn't feel real. It feels artificial. Now, a lot of that's probably because of bad CGI and green screen effects and, like, lack of real shooting locations because they can just make everything on a computer, and they're overworking their, you know, VFX people to death and getting people straight out of VFX school to do it because any senior in the uh, visual effects community is not working on Marvel films because Disney treats them like slaves, barely pays them, and it's just an overall poor quality product. But point is, yeah, even real world stuff doesn't feel very real world anymore. I mean, I remember when Spider-Man Homecoming came out, the first Spider-Man Tom Holland movie, and even then, it didn't look as realistic as the OG Raimi films that had like that gritty New York feel to it. It just was kind of... Eh, whimsical, bright, colored, it, it didn't make me feel like it was real. It absolutely felt like fiction at that point. Whereas original MCU movies, and even further back, like the Sam Raimi trilogy, felt like they could be taking place in our world. So yeah, I would absolutely agree that this is a fair criticism. Too many world-altering events have taken place throughout the MCU timeline. Half the universe is absent for five years before being dramatically restored. Earth is now host to any number of alien refugees, and miracle metals are powering Earth's technology. Everyday life as a modern human might recognize it has been irretrievably altered. Y yeah, I mean, exactly. Compare what the MCU has done to, like, the Nolan Batman trilogy. Life is still probably relatively normal for all humans in Gotham, even knowing what they know about Bane or about the Joker or Batman or whatnot, their life is still probably relatively normal. You get up, you shave, you shit, you shower, you go to work, and maybe if you get mugged, some angry dude with some psychological issues and a cape will save you. But now imagine yourself as a real person in the MCU, not as a superhero, but just like as a regular boots on the ground individual who's trying to get a cab on their way to work. I'm struggling to think of what I would do in that scenario because it doesn't seem like a legitimate, real, tangible world, unlike the Nolan films, or again, even unlike like the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. Farewell driving around in vans. Peyton Reed's new film, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, MCU film number 31, takes place largely in a microscopic fantasy world called the Quantum Realm, and it may as well take place inside Star Wars or Middle-Earth for all of its sense of weight, reality, and relatability. Ant-Man, the Wasp, and their family 
are sucked into the quantum realm when they meet bizarre, parmesium-like fantasy creatures, speak with several weird humanoids, and have to face off against a teeny tiny tyrant named King the Conqueror. Oh yes, and Modok is there. And we have all seen what Modok looks like. <laughs> While it might be fun to occasionally flee the real world and explore a bizarre dimension of fantasy creatures, it seems that's all the MCU knows how to do now. Ex yeah, I've been saying this forever. We need some real, legitimate, grounded stories that just are, are small-scale and well-written. There's a reason that Netflix Daredevil is still looked at in such high regard, and that was at one point technically part of the MCU. I don't think it's still considered as such, but it was part of the MCU technically at one point, and if you ask me, it's probably the pinnacle of the MCU when you look at the writing, the directing, the whole nine. Daredevil is really what we need more of. Whether it be in TV format, movie format, I don't care. If you don't only have the world end or the universe end or the quantum megapixel Googleverse end so many times before it all just becomes the same and, and blase. Ant-Man and the Wasp are in their element here, able to use their shrinking growing powers to fight evil interdimensional monsters. The days of the characters driving around in vans chasing pretty crime lords are clearly at an end. Exploring the streets of San Francisco is no longer of interest to the series. It's all green screen effects, CGI killers, and gooey spacecraft. Indeed, Ant-Man is scolded early in the film for his desire to stay home, to protect his teen daughter, and to not go gallivanting about with Quantum Hooey. This film series berates characters who long for normalcy. Well, look at those reviews. It also berates fans who long for quality writing. Of course, Quantum Mania was hardly the turning point. Indeed, the first Avengers team up in 2012 already sort of broken the seal. The film featured an invading alien force attacking New York and the Avengers doing the job that would have been ordinarily handled by helicopters and Harrier jets. Avengers Extinction. At that point, the world now had memories of a major incident in New York City, but life was still more or less sane. Eventually, however, too many extraordinary things have been happening on Earth to ignore, and humanity seemingly needed to make peace with the fact that they live in a comic book world where space tyrants will occasionally kill them and the unregulated superhumans will stand as a freelance military against them. With Vibranium in the world and Iron Man's efforts to disarm all nations, shouldn't the MCU look like a technological utopia? That's another issue that I've had with these movies. There is no sense of technology scaling. When you watch the first Iron Man movie, it, it seems like the, the technology is impossible. The only reason it was able to be done is because Tony Stark did it. Tony Stark is some unhinged, brilliant madman that was able to just break the barriers of scientific norms all for survival. And then, you know, by the time we get to the point where we're at the MCU now, everyone can do anything because why not? I mean, in Endgame, Tony Stark just casually figures out the answer to time travel. He may as well have been in his bathrobe, and I know that's a you know criticism that, that's been around forever, and I'm not going to get into it. My point is, I'm glad folks are finally waking up to what I've been saying for years, and that the MCU blows. The MCU, of course, has chosen to ignore Earth. The widespread ramifications of constant superheroing are not addressed apart from a few tossed-off lines of dialogue about the blip, the world's nickname for the five-year span when the half the universe was dead, which I still don't know why they didn't just call the snap. That's literally what it was, but, you know, it's because that's what fans and been calling it for, you know, years, so you can't do what the fans want, you know, we'll have to call it the blip. One might think more could be explored in terms of what long-term effects a blip might have had on the entire planet's ecosystem, but it's not something the Avengers are going to spend much time addressing. They're too busy in the multiverse, or in the quantum realm, or in Wakanda to really pay attention to the world at large. Physics no longer has any meaning to the Avengers themselves, and they fight to save a world they never visit. Here's a fun idea for a future installment of the MCU. After a months long interdimensional battle with a new devil death lord in a pocket dimension where time has no meaning, the Avengers return to Earth triumphant only to learn that humankind has actually been extinct for some time. Not through the machinations of a villain, but by natural causes. They were too busy fighting they didn't notice us real life people on the ground. That's certainly what the MCU is beginning to feel like. Wow, talk about scathing. Well, what do you guys think of this? I'll tell you what I think. I think people are getting tired of the MCU. I think people are getting tired of superhero stuff in general. I mean, yeah, the Batman made some money. It, it made good money. It wasn't exactly like a box office breaker. Kevin Feige has already said they're going to start spacing out their releases because he knows that people are getting superhero fatigue. DC, does anyone care what's going on with DC when James Gunn announced all that stuff? The Brave and the Bold, Superman Legacy, and a bunch of C-tier stuff that only the hardest of hard comic book nerds would probably care about if it weren't for the last 15 years of oversaturated comic book stuff. It's just not fun anymore, guys. You're beating it into the ground. Even even the normies you've got to care about these nerdy things don't care anymore. Or, or if they do, they're going to stop soon because they're just a little behind on account of their normies. 
But that's just my thoughts on this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, or you can let me know where you find me on Twitter at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe to the channel, check out the back catalog. I got one from a couple days ago about people already throwing hate at the new Joker movie because Harley Quinn is in it, even though they haven't even seen it. Or maybe anime is more your style. Well, what about an anime voice actor that's very pro reparations, even though he's a white guy? You could, you know, check that down here as well. Please do subscribe because this has been Words of Paradise.